Welcome back, it's Lionel, Tech Lead and Partner at West Vault. And remember that little thing I said about PHP? You know, the one about maybe it's not dead? Well... I thought you were dead. My death was greatly exaggerated. Exactly. So today we have a new release of PHP 8.2. The first thing I wanted to say about it is that it's great that PHP is now re uh, releasing regularly. We didn't used to see that many releases all the time. I don't. You don't need it to be coming out all the time because there's really not that many things to fix. But it's good that the language is addressing and looking at some of the concerns that are around here. So PHP 8.2 has been released. And um, there's a whole bunch of new changes over here. And what I'm doing is I'm going to go through a few of the ones that I think are significant and maybe give you my insights, whether they're going to be useful, uh, whether they're not so useful, whether it's a great addition to the language or not. And it's just good for you to know that these things are there. Okay, so the first one that's come up is the read-only classes. So on the left-hand side here, you can see that um, before this, you used to have to define the read-only uh, title. Now you just put it as a class itself in front of it. So, <clears throat> um, I mean, this is still functionally okay in terms of a read-only class, but of course there are some issues that, uh, you know, maybe you forgot to put the read-only or there's no definition of this. You usually use this class to handle some of your... Um, say your uh, configurations or things like that or you don't want anyone extending on top of your class to change it this is like the master class that never changes so it's a good addition good definition on top there uh, i personally don't use very much read only classes because the applications are usually just one or two classes long you don't want to extend and extend them so good addition not that common all right this junk normal forms okay over here you have like a huge amount of uh, like a return uh, so there's a lot of logic happening over here right um, and then on the right hand side it's kind of short formed into a and B now entity so it accepts these uh, parameters you used to have to create <clears throat> a function inside uh, you know, uh, what do you call a, a conditional in there? Now it's in the title. I think it looks cleaner, but again, if you are validating such a complex amount of variables, you really need to be thinking about your function itself. So I, I have never come across this requirement in uh, you know my, my programming career, but you know, some people might have it, or you might be working off an old system, not really that common. Next one, allow false as a standalone type. So over here, you have a function that re uh, returns a boolean. Uh, down <laughs> you have a function that just returns false. Um, really don't know what you would actually be using that for. Like this is uh, some. If you guys have any comments, like where we can use this, please tell me because. I don't know why you would have a function. Why not just define it as false? So that's a very strange one. New random extension. Now, um, I use, I mean, randomness is quite oftenly used. Like you usually use it to seed some sort of key or something like this. So what you have here is a new um, algorithm here. And uh, it seems to be, there's a new class that actually calls the randomizer. So I guess it's okay. I mean, in E2, we have a random string generator. I'm not sure about the algorithm and how uh, random it is, but generally these things are pretty secure as long as they are pretty long. So uh, again, it's always good to have randomized engine, just pulling it in there. <coughs> Um, they're using a Mersenne Twister algorithm. So there's always new algorithms in the encryption. If any of you guys know what this means in terms of how secure it is, uh, please put it in the comments. Um, I, I honestly think, you know, there's random and there's very random and uh, it's good to have it in the language itself. We use it a lot, but frameworks have all have their own um, random generators. So not that common, but maybe it'll take some load off a framework. 
constants in traits. Okay. Um, not. I mean, you have a read-only class already on top, so uh, I guess you know. Generally, you just want to make sure people are not extending your class or extending your uh, traits on top of it. I I don't see that much functionality for these things. Um, I I guess there might be some uses for it, but in over fact, probably not going to be very common. Depreciated dynamic properties. Okay. Um, Basically, you have a user and you are not allowed to insert uh, new um, dynamic properties in a class. So getting much more uh, secured. And um, I think it's, it's probably good programming to define your variables. I know a lot of languages, they want you to define your class, what can go into the class, what cannot go into the class. Again, the frameworks already handle a lot of these things, um, especially like if you use the Yi framework and you try to assign it, it just won't work, it won't assign that, or you can't use it. But <clears throat> um, again, just trying to be more thorough, make the language a bit more stable of it. Uh, again, I think assigning uh, these things on the fly, you know, they need to be validated. Uh, I could see it happening a little bit in, in certain aspects, but most of the time people are just going to go and define their variable in there anyway. So this just kind of locks it up a little bit. Yeah, I'll try to avoid mistakes and typos and, and things like that. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty good. Uh, functionality just making the language sort of like a little bit more robust you know you can't just add on top of it but I don't uh, generally I don't see that happening that often like we generally don't extend and even if you add it into the class right okay maybe you forgot last name and you put first name and, and you assign it and you want to use it in the future uh, I mean you'll see that problem come up if you are taking some sort of function that has no now allowed or something. So there are a lot more places to catch this problem all over the place. Okay, new functions and interfaces uh, depreciated the string interpolation. Wow, this is, I'm not real. I, I actually kind of like that, you know, what string? Okay, maybe this, Any uh, you can use that. I'm not sure whether um, that actually appears. Let's try that. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, let's see if you can zoom in there and take a look at this. I, I wrote a function out here in my command that just says to define this and echo name. So not sure. It works. It works and it shows the error already over there. So I guess now it, it won't work. Yeah, like you can't just put this. You'll have to put the dollar sign inside. Uh, that's my feeling about it. Uh, if anyone uh, does this for variables, um, look, <laughs> like I, I think it's not going to be that common. So yeah, look, it's good to remove it. There's no point having these things. Uh, maybe you have one annoying developer out there who just wants to do that stuff. And um, yeah, now you can't. Okay. So that one, not such a big issue. Uh, methods, uh, return of static. Yeah. Get stream, get stream uh, clear methods, zip archives. I think this will allow you to stream it into a zip file for very large files. No longer locale sensitive. Oh, what the heck is that about? Let's check that one out. Okay, I, I have no idea why they are locale sensitive or not. Like, does it make a difference where you are? Uh, no idea. So, <clears throat> not a big issue. Uh, call upkeep, resend pick. This stuff, I think, will happen more in the framework side. Mo most developers aren't too, um, too concerned about this. Reflection functions, again, a very advanced area. It's a very small problem. Uh, if anyone has any insights to this, 
an example. Please shoot me, I'll make a video about it. But generally here, I mean, lots of uh, syntax just cleaning up UTF encode and decode. I mean, I don't think anyone uses that anymore. Um, it's probably come standard. Uh, you know, just, just some minor cleanups. So 8.2 is not going to break anything. Um, I think there's some good stuff. It's not really revolutionary, just cleaning up the thing. Uh, let's take a look at whether the performance of 8.2. Okay, so um, I went on to the site, this Phronix, you know, Google, uh, whatever they, they have here, and they're running a test in the dev uh, version of 8.2. And um, their conclusion is that it's in the right direction. Again, I, I stress these kind of comparison things. Very hard to see what is apples to apples. You know, these things are probably all empty. Um, so they checked it with all these specs over here. I think there is the basic premises here is that you're seeing about a 1 to 2% performance uh, switching the language. Now, this is not very significant. You know, it could be one off. It could be on the side. But, you know, they're obviously cleaning up some of the languages and making it more optimized. So a little bit of performance there. Not really uh, that significant. You can see um, what you call a render test, 8.2, slightly uh, behind a little bit um, for the CLL test. I mean, very hard to measure. 8.1 to 8.2, small differences. I think this is significant enough for us to look at it. Generating SVGs, you know... Uh, 8.2, much better uh, in the memory usage point of view. So a little bit more of that efficiency. But uh, it's not that significant. Very, very small amount. So this is what you would expect from a, uh, not a version upgrade, just a patch. Okay, guys? So uh, still very good. I, as I said, if you're using PHP 5, uh, please upgrade to PHP 7 or PHP 8. That's a big jump in 5 to 7. Uh, if you're able to upgrade safely for 7 to 8, uh, just do so because there's not many things breaking in there. It looks pretty stable and it's again a step in the right direction for PHP because it's not dead. So that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.